Welcome to Main Made Tutorials with Main Made Crochet. In today's episode, we will be learning how to make a ski mask on the Attic King Express. The skills you need for this project are single crochet and half double crochet. For materials, you'll need a crochet hook, three to 4.5 millimeters. You'll need yarn, weight four, about 200 grams. And then you'll need scissors. And last but not least, you'll need a yarn needle. This tutorial is made using the Addy King Express, but I'm almost certain you can modify the pattern and use it on a knitting machine with a similar amount of needles. But that's everything. Let's go. Okay, so today we will be learning how to cast on. And to cast on, you just want to go ahead and make sure you have the first black needle in front of the yarn chamber. And then you want to go ahead and just drop some yarn into the center of the machine. You don't need a lot depending on the project you're using. Just let it touch the floor or whatever surface is underneath. And then you want to take the yarn and you want to insert it in front of the black needle, the first one right here. And then you want to start slowly cranking your machine and this is where we start to cast off. So the next needle is black and you're going to go behind it and the next needle is black as well, and you're going to go in front of it. And then all the needles after that are white, but you want to continue that same pattern. So behind, in front, behind, in front, behind, in front, behind, in front. And once you get the hang of that, you can go a little bit faster. And you do that for the entirety of all 46 of the needles. You want to make sure that you're not pulling too tight. You want to have a natural tension as you're doing this because later on you'll have issues when you're trying to turn your machine if you were pulling on the yarn too tight. Okay, and once you get to the last needle, which is the white one here, you'll always be ending behind the last white needle if you're casting on in all 46 needles. So you just want to go ahead and open the yarn chamber. And there's a little hole here, make sure the yarn goes into that hole that will help you with your tension and now you want to close your yarn chamber you never want to turn your machine while the yarn chamber is open because your needles will end up hitting it and that will break them it is also not fully closed when it looks like this it's fully closed when it looks like that and you'll hear a little click so from here you can go ahead and start circular knitting and before you go to do that you want to make sure that you are in circular knitting mode so you want to make sure that this red tab is facing down. And for your first round, if you're a beginner, I would go a little bit slow. So you just want to make sure that nothing's wrong with your machine and that your tension is good. Okay, so that's one row, it was pretty simple. While you're doing this, you do want to be working with yarn that has not a lot of tension coming from the ball or the skein or the cake. So I'm using this, it's Bernat Premium, and the yarn is actually being pulled from the center with very low tension. You also want to make sure that when you're working with your machine, there's no knots or nothing that will get caught in the yarn chamber because that will cause issues while you're working with your machine and you could break it. So just be mindful. Another tip is you do want to slightly hold your yarn and that's for two reasons. You want to hold it to create tension to make sure that your knitting is even once it comes out of the machine and two, as the machine knits, if there's any impurities, a knot or anything in here, it will hit your finger first before it hits the machine. So that's just a great um, way to save any issues arising with this and breaking it. Yeah, but it's pretty simple for circular knitting. All you want to do is go ahead and just crank your machine around. So you can continue to go ahead and just crank with your hands, or you can go ahead if you have an adapter, put it to your screwdriver and put it on to this hand part over here and then it's motorized and then if you just press your drill you can just let it go even if you're doing it this way i still suggest that you have your hand here holding for tension just to make sure you don't run into those issues that i mentioned before but just go ahead and work these in until you hit 50 rows Oh, 
okay so once you get to 50 rows you want to make sure that you have the black needle again at the front of the yarn chamber so what you're going to do is you're going to knit the first black needles so this will be needle one and needle two in your machine so if you're using the screwdriver and adapter before you want to go ahead and just switch to your hands for this so you're just going to go ahead and knit down those first two needles so that's one and two okay perfect so what you're going to do from here is open the yarn chamber and then you're going to take the yarn out this is the third needle you don't need it in that one and you're basically going to drop some waste yarn into the center of the machine i do a few feet um you're going to see why we're using this later and then basically from here you just want to go ahead and cut this okay and then you just want to close the yarn chamber and then what we're going to do from here is we are going to knit down until the 14th stitch so that's this one right over here so just go ahead and knit down to 14. okay perfect you can leave it up a little bit or you can go all the way down so then i'm just going to turn my machine so where we took the yarn out is in front of us so from here, you just want to go ahead and thread your yarn needle. It is going to be a little bit difficult because we do have quite some yarn here. So it might start to knot up on itself like this, as you can see, but don't worry about that. Just pull it through. And then what we want to do now is you want to pick up all of these stitches. These are drop stitches. So we drop these. You're going to pick them up with the needle. So this is needle number three. This is needle number four. And you want to pick up all the needles up till needle 14. Once you start to pick up a few stitches, you'll realize that you should start pulling the yarn through. Because if you don't do this, the yarn will really start to knot up on itself. So you want to go ahead and just pull that through periodically. So 9 on 7, 8, 9. You really do not want to drop these, so be careful. I am moving a little bit fast. Okay. So now we're at 12, 13, 14. Perfect. So we're at the last one. You just want to go ahead and pull that yarn up and pull it all the way through. And then once you've pulled it all the way through, I'd pull the needle out. And then what you want to do is take this yarn and just fold it up against itself and then make a knot with it so you can drop it in the center and it's not just hanging all crazy all over the place so let's turn our machine again so here we are this needle that's up right here is needle 15 okay so what you're going to do is this is a yarn that we just cut so we're going to take it again you want to leave a slight tail just maybe four or five inches or so and you're going to feed it in front of needle 15 you want to open your yarn chamber and put the yarn back in make sure you let it drop in that little hole close it all the way through and then you can hold it here if you would like or you can hold it over here it doesn't really matter you just want to go slowly because we are now adding the yarn back in so you're just going to go ahead and go all the way around until you reach the first black needle and I'll show you what happens then. Okay, so here we are at the first black needle again. So we kept on the first two black needles and we started dropping stitches on the third one. So now if you look at the machine, all of these stitches are dropped. So if you continue knitting here, you're gonna have a real issue. Your whole project's just gonna fall apart. So what you have to do is we have to cast on to these stitches again. So what that looks like is this. So at the beginning, when we cast it off, we started with the yarn in front of the first black needle. So whenever you're casting on, no matter where you're casting on from, you just want to make sure you start with your yarn sitting in front of whichever your first needle is. In this case, we're casting on starting at needle three. So. We're just going to let the yarn go in front of needle three. We're going to open the yarn chamber and take it out. And we're going to cast on how we did before. So cast on is in front and behind. Then in front 
and behind, then in front and behind, in front and behind, in front and behind, in front and behind. Okay? So we have one needle left and we ended on behind, that's fine. We know that this is needle 15 and that's where we reattached our yarn last time, so that's a good sign. So what you're going to do is make sure that the yarn ends behind here on needle 14, open the yarn chamber, drop the yarn in, and then close the yarn chamber with the yarn inside of it, inside the little hole. So now we can just circular knit as normal. Okay, and just for some context, what we did right now was just this part here. So like the little head. So what the part we're working on right now is this little section in between the eyes and the mouth portion. And for that, we are going to do 12 rounds of circular knitting. So from here, you want to go ahead and set your counter to zero. So we got zero on the counter, or you can just know to do 12 rows, whichever works for you. And then if you notice here, you want to, you want to be a little bit careful on this first round going around because we did cast on. So if you cast it on incorrectly, you may have some issues here when you go around. So just make sure to go around slowly. So here we are close to the cast on and everything's looking fine. Okay, and that was perfect. If anything fell off, or didn't remain attached in this section, you know you would have made a mistake. And all the rest of the needles didn't have any changes or alterations, so you know your whole project is fine. You can go ahead and do the remainder of the 12 rows by hand, or you can use um, your screwdriver and adapter if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and use my hands. So as you can see here, I'm actually at row 12 and the black needle is in front. I'm actually going to complete this row and when I get back to the black needle, that's when I'll stop and show you the next step. Okay, here we are at the first black needle and now it's time to make the mouth section. So to make the mouth, what we want to do is we want to knit the first five needles. So that's one, two, three, four, five. This is needle five right here. You wanna open the yarn chamber, take the yarn out and put it behind the fifth needle. And then again, you just want to leave um, a few feet of yarn. The mouth is smaller than the eye portion, so you don't need to leave as much as you left for the eyes. So just leave a little less for the mouth and go ahead and cut that. Close the yarn chamber. And now you want to knit down until the 12th needle. So that's this one over here. So you just want to go up until 12. So this one's 12, let it drop. Then you want to take your yarn again and yarn your needle, thread your needle, whichever one you like. So just go ahead and pull it through and up. And you just want to pick up your stitches the first stitch you'll be picking up is six, which is right here. Six, seven, eight. And remember, be careful. You really want to be careful to all the stitches to the left of your work. These stitches are a little bit more secure, but these ones are the ones that are likely to fall off the dropped stitches because they have nothing holding them down and secure into the machine. So that's 12. This is a 12 stitch. You want to go ahead and just pull all this yarn through. Okay, perfect. And then you want to take the yarn out of the needle. And then you just want to wrap this up on itself again and make a little knot. Tie it and throw it in the middle. So now you have two of these. You can see this one's much bulkier. Okay, drop it in there and you're good. And then you want to take the yarn that we cut again and reattach it at needle 13, just like that with a little tail. Open the yarn chamber, put the yarn in, make sure it drops into that hole, close the yarn chamber, and then give that a little tug. And you just want to go slowly for your first row around. All right, and then when you get to the last needle, which is five. 
five is the last needle holding a stitch this is where we have to cast on again because remember these are drop stitches and we pick them up so your project will completely fall apart if you keep on knitting here so make sure you don't do that you want to open the yarn chamber and you start casting off on the stitch next to the last knitted stitch so you're going to start in front on needle six and then you're going to go behind needle seven in front behind in front behind in front okay so the last time we did the cast off for the eyes we finished behind it doesn't matter if you finish in front or behind when you're casting back on just go ahead and open the yarn chamber put the yarn in and close it it will naturally continue the pattern as you go around in the circle at this point you want to go ahead and put your counter back to zero all right and then go around and knit your first row carefully to make sure you didn't make any mistakes over here in your cast on okay so we're all good to go next we're going to be working on the neck portion right here so this section over here and this section takes 75 rows so you know i'm gonna this screwdriver in a single charge can do about one of these ski masks after that you will need to charge it again so i interchange between my hands and the adapter just because it can't do the full job it is a lot of work okay so here we are at row 74 so i'm just going to go ahead and finish it off you want to make sure that if you're working with the screwdriver you do not go to the exact number you stop like a row or two before just so you make sure you can get to the needle you need to get to so i'm just going to go ahead and get there with my hands so here we are at needle number one exactly where we need to be and when you're working on the second layer of the double layer of the ski mask now you're working from bottom up so now we're going to work the mouth first and we're going to do the same exact thing we did with the mouth the first time except we're not going to leave a long tail so what we did for the mouth was we knit down the first five needles okay so this is needle number five and then what do we do we open the yarn chamber take it out put it in front then we close it and we're not going to leave a long tail so what we actually are going to do is cut a shorter tail maybe just about 10 or 12 inches maybe even shorter you just need a tail long enough to get you from needle 6 to needle 12 so that's not very far at all but you also don't want it too short so that it will fall out. So I just went ahead and threaded that and we're going to knit down until needle 12. Okay, this is 12 here. So we knit it down and just go ahead and pick up all those stitches. It's going to be a lot easier this time because the yarn isn't just unnecessarily long. So you can just pull it through easily as you go so this is 11 and 12 so pull those up and you can just let it fall into the center and then exactly what we did before hook it on to needle 13 in front of it open the yarn chamber put the yarn in close the yarn chamber give this a little bit of a tug to make sure it's secure and then you want to put your counter to zero all right, and then you just want to knit around and stop when you get to needle five, which is right over here. And then we're going to cast on from needle six to 12 again. Okay, so we're at needle five. I'm going to open the yarn chamber and remember to cast on. You always start in front, then you go in front behind, in front behind, in front behind. So in front, behind, in front, behind, in front, behind, and we're gonna end in front open up the yarn chamber put the yarn inside and close it and then it's okay if it's not literally in front when you put it in the yarn chamber because when you knit it down it's just going to fall in front in place and make sure this tail isn't falling out here this would also be a good time to tie these ends if you cut them too short by mistake this will secure them but don't pull too tightly or that will create 
issues with your tension in your knitting and it won't keep it nice and even. So now from here, you just want to go ahead and make the 12 rows again that we did the first time we were making this little section here in between the eyes and the mouth. Here we are at 12 again. So you want to make sure to actually knit the 12th round. So here it says 12 and I'm at the black needles, but just go ahead and continue that 12th row. Okay, so here I'm still on my 12th row, but we're getting close to the mouth over here. So that's a sign that we want to get ready to start working on the eye portion again. Okay, so to do that, we're going to do the same thing we did before. So you want to go ahead and just knit down the first two black needles, which is needle one and two. So that's this one and just the next one. Open the yarn chamber, pull the yarn out in front. And again, you do not need to leave a long tail, just one long enough to get to the stitches we're about to drop. And we're going to drop stitches three up until 14. So I'm going to cut about the same length, maybe just a tad bit longer. Sorry, my tiny scissors here. They're so cute. Okay, so just go ahead, make sure you have one and two knitted and drop stitches three up until 14. Okay, and always to be safe, if you get around here, you can just go ahead and put the yarn in now, just in case you start turning your machine and you don't want to forget. So just go ahead and just put it in the chamber just as a reminder, but you do want to always pick up your stitches before you start knitting around in a circle again. Because if you don't, like I told you before, that will cause a lot of issues. So this is needle number three, four, and just go ahead and pick up all the ones you dropped. Okay, almost there. I just left these up. Sometimes I don't knit them all down because there is a chance of them falling off and you really don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to go ahead and knit down 13 and 14 and you can see the yarn already started to pick up 15 just so that's a good little reminder so I wouldn't drop that stitch so that's perfect I'm just going to drop that tail in the center so I'm just going to continue knitting as normal until we get to needle three over here and then we're going to have to cast on one last time and you also want to set your row counter back to zero Okay, so here we are at needle two. So you want to open the yarn chamber and then you're going to start casting off. So you already know the pattern and that is in front, behind, in front, behind, in front, behind. All right, and we end behind. When we're making the eye portion, open the yarn chamber, put the yarn in and close it. And then we want to go ahead and go around for a total of 50 rows like we did in the beginning and then we'll be done with the machine and I'll show you how to cast off. Okay, so here I am at row 49. I'm just going to go until I find the black needle. Okay, so here's the black needle that will bring me to row 50. So I'm just going to open the yarn chamber. I'm just going to drop it in front of the last white needle. I'm just going to cut maybe about two feet or a foot of yarn, close the yarn chamber. So from here, we're going to slowly drop all of our stitches. So to drop your stitches, you just want to knit. And this is the last stitch we had. You don't want to go all the way around. You want to stop just before this first stitch right over here. And then you want to go ahead and grab your needle and we're going to go backwards and pick up all of those stitches we just dropped. Okay, so this is needle 46 and we're going to pick up every single stitch, all 46 stitches, starting with one and then two, three. So just to go around in a circle and pick up all of your stitches just like you did 
when we were making the mouth and the eye portions. Be careful, if you do what I just did and picked up a bunch of stitches without pulling it through, you have the potential to drop all of those stitches. So just be very, very mindful when you're working on this step because it is the last step, but it can actually ruin your entire project if not done correctly. So then I'm just going to go ahead and turn and drop the last of the stitches, just those stitches over here. And I'm just going to pick them all up, even stitch 46, you want to pick it up. And that's this one right here. And just pull your yarn through. And that is how you cast off. And now we are done with our machine. So from here, what we want to do is fold the mask into itself. So this is the top hat. You can see the eyes and the mouth. And then if you pull it this way, You'll see the eyes and the mouth again, but it's upside down. So what you want to do is I would go ahead and tug on the yarn at the top just a little bit and it will close in the hole. You don't need to close it tightly or all the way, but that's just so you can grab it easier. So then I put my hand in the other side and get my hand all the way down and then grab the top of this side and pull it up inside out like so and then you want to line up the two eye holes and the two mouth holes so it might be a little bit tricky to find i look for these two little sections and i just match them up and then that's how i get it you do want to be delicate here because some of these stitches can fall out if you didn't have the best integrity over here on the corners so do just be careful but they are pretty secure for the most part from here you need to go and grab your crochet hook and then do you remember these so these are what we are going to use to make the stitching around the eyes and the mouth so this stitching here that's what those pieces of yarn will be used for you can start with the mouth or the eyes it doesn't matter i'm going to start with the mouth just because it's smaller so it'll be easier to show you guys what i'm doing you want to find this and just unravel it quickly and then just make sure these are in the same place and you just want to be um weary Remember we cut some strings, some of them are a little bit short, like this one over here. So if you tug on it too tightly, it could come undone. So just be careful of that. Just tug on it, but don't pull it too tight or you will mess up um, your stitches. So I'm just going to go ahead and line them up here. All right, so I like to start in these corners or as close to where this string starts as possible. So to do this, I always use my discretion. So you want to insert your hook in a way where you don't create a hole, something like that. That's not what you want. So to change that, you want to change the direction in which you insert your hook. So something downwards over here would be better because then we have to go and insert our hook over here. So to stitch this together, you can either go and make single crochets or you can go and make half double crochets. Just do whichever makes more sense to you or whichever one you like better. Just to start, you want to insert your hook onto both sides and just pull the yarn through. So this would be like pulling up a loop or creating your slip knot. And then we're going to go in with our first, I'm going to use single crochets. So I'm going to insert my hook downwards and pick up that leg and then I'm going to push my hook into the second side yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through both okay and then again I'm going to insert my hook downwards and then push it through the other side as well so that's this part over here then I'm going to yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and if you wanted to have double crochet you would just yarn over first and then again See, there's a big hole here. You don't just want to go and stick your hook in there. What would be wise is to pick up a piece of yarn and then pick up another one, and then it will close that gap and then go through the other side like so. 
yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Okay, perfect. And then you just want to keep on doing that all the way around. There's no really super specific way to go about this. Just with practice, you will get better. What you do want to notice is that as long as one side looks good, the other side naturally looks a little bit better. So I mainly focus on making sure the part that I'm looking at or that's facing me looks good. And then if you look on the inside here, it looks equally as good. If that's not the case, you can take it out and try it again. Like I said, with practice, you'll definitely figure it out. But don't worry about it because everything's nice and secure. So you can always undo this and try it again if you don't like the way it looks. I'm going to go ahead and finish going around the mouth with single crochets and around the eyes. And then I'll show you how to close off to make the eyes like this and how to close off to make the top of the head look like this, all right? Okay, and when you get to the very last stitch, you just want to go ahead and slip stitch. So this was the first stitch we made. So you're going to go ahead and insert your hook underneath, yarn over, and pull up a loop, and pull through. That's your slip stitch. And then you're going to chain up one to create a knot, and then tighten it as tight as possible you want to hide this we don't really want to see it and now the mouth is completed so what you want to do is take this string and take your hook or a needle i'm going to take my hook and just insert it somewhere very far up and you want to have your hook in between the outer layer and the inner layer all right so you don't want it poking out through the front layer or poking out through the back and then you just want to go ahead and catch that piece of yarn so yarn over and pull it through all right and then you can also pick another place maybe up here and then you're going to catch it again you want to make sure that you pull it through the same hole so you're going to yarn over and pull the yarn in to the ski mask and you want to tug on it so this string is all the way in there as well. Okay, so now it's nice and hidden and the mouth looks like that. So now I'm just going to take this one and untie it and I'm going to do the same thing around the eyes. And I'll come back and show you how to do the top. All right, so now the eyes are outlined. I'm just going to quickly show you how to close up the top part. So to close up the top, you want to find the string that's hanging. And then once you find it, you want to tug on it to close this hole shut. Don't tug on it too tight because you don't want to snap this yarn. So then you want to go ahead and thread or yarn your needle. And then just go ahead and secure this hole by just sewing them together like that two to three times and you want to make these pretty tight and then you want to fold up the outer layer and find the string again and tug on it as well to close it it will fold the other way so you might need to just push it in a little bit like that all right and then close it as tight as you can so then you want to take these two strings and make a knot. All right, pull it twice and then I just make one more knot. So now you've basically secured the two sides together, but just to make extra reinforcement, what we're now going to do is close off this hole again, the same way we just did the other one. So you want to get the needle underneath both sides and pull it through two to three times pulling pretty tightly both times so I just did it once twice and then after that I'm just going to do it one more time okay so this is my third one okay so then what I'm going to do is tie two knots again like we just did and you can just use your discretion while, while doing this. I'm just showing you how I just make sure this is super secure. And after this, I'm going to put my hand in here and look for the tip. Look for the middle part on the inside. And I'm just going to insert my needle. Make sure not to 
push too hard so you don't poke yourself. I'm just going to push the needle down and thread it through. And then I'm going to take it and put it inside out, okay? Do you see it's really nice and closed? And then I'm going to go back through again the same hole. If you need some help and guidance, you might want to put your hand in again and just poke it through. You want to make sure you get it right in the center. Okay, pull it through. All right, perfect. And then flip it inside out again. All right, and then get it all the way through. So one last time, I'm just going to tie two more knots. And now you can see this is not coming undone. You can throw it in the wash and it will be super, super secure. Okay, one knot. And then from here, you want to take your needle again. And same thing we did with um, the mouth and the eyes. You just want to go ahead and pierce it through either with your crochet hook or your needle. And you want to pull it down as far as you possibly can. This is a good spot. And pull the yarn through. You can cut the excess yarn here or you can just go into the same hole and just hide the rest of the tail in the ski mask. So it is pretty long. I am going to go ahead and cut it. And a tip is to tug on it just a little bit and cut it. So then it's already hidden. It's just gonna fall right back in place. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the remainder of my strings. I didn't tuck in the eye one and I'll show you why. That's because I'm going to use it to close off the eye portion. If you don't want to have two eye holes, you can actually just stop right here with your mask and it would be completed. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my crochet hook and find the center. The center is about right here. You can try it on and see where the center is for you, but after practice, you'll just get to know it. So you can use a stitch marker and for a stitch marker, I'll just use the yarn I just cut off. So I want to go into this stitch right here. I'm just gonna take my hook and insert it here. Then I'm just going to go and weave it in between every stitch. You can also do that with a needle. I'm gonna yarn over and just pull it through all of these stitches until I get it to that center point right here. And I can take out my quote unquote stitch marker. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this yarn through here. All right, perfect. And now you can go like that to see if it's centered. You want to see if the eyes are a similar size. One might close up a little bit more than the other. So I do think that I need it to come over a little bit more over here. Yep, and that looks more centered to me. And I'm going to actually finish this off with the yarn needle again. So I'm going to go and thread this needle and line it up just over here in the center. And now it's closed off. Okay, and if you don't like it, you can just move it at this point. So I'm just going to hold it like a little sandwich now. And I'm just going to keep on going in this general area until it's tight and secure. All right, so you can do that a few times. And then if you have a hole like that, you just want to try your best to close it by going in with like other angles because you don't want there to be just a random hole sitting there if you can avoid it. So you can do that. I have, okay. Perfect, and they look pretty symmetrical, pretty cool. A little scary face. And then what I do now, just for extra security, I go ahead and make a knot. As you can see, <laughs> I guess I love knots. So sorry, I have some pinky yarn over here from my other ski mask. All right, so I'll make that nice and tight. I always do two knots. That was the first one. This is the second one. And I tried to like hide it on the side here. And then finally, 
you just want to pierce it through and have it in between the outer layer and the inner layer and just pull it through to hide it. And then we're gonna tug on it a little bit, cut it, and then it's in. And at this point, you just want to go ahead and weave in any of the tail pieces of yarn you have not done yet. I'm just doing my very last one here at the top and then your ski mask will be done. Okay, so here we have the final project. I cannot try it on and show it to you because this is actually in order. And on that note, so I just want to top in here and give a quick shout out to everyone who did order a ski mask from me. Having to make so many of them did really help me figure out a pattern. And that's why I was able to drop this video today. I hope it was helpful and some of you learned how to make a ski mask or you just enjoyed the video. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.